Okay, so the first one is a doorway stretch, and I don't have a doorway right in front of me, obviously. So I'm just gonna simulate, I'm gonna turn sideways to the camera so you can see my hands and my elbows. This is where the door frame would be. You straddle the doorway, so one foot inside, one foot outside, and then you just gently push yourself forward, and that's gonna stretch. All the scalenes in the front, your chest musculature, the front of the shoulders, these muscles that get sore and tired from you holding onto a baby, leaning over a sink, and then all the other usual stuff of being in front of the computer, etc. You really wanna stretch these muscles out. In fact, a lot of times people feel tight in their neck and their upper back, and the, the instinct is to grab on and go this way because it feels really good to do that. Well, you can do that too, but that's not doing anything to lengthen back out these muscles in the front that are tight up from you doing all the things you do as a parent. So that's move number one. Move number two is, and you can use anything for this, soup cans, some of the kids' toys, whatever it takes. I got a couple of seven and a half pound dumbbells and I'm going a front raise all the way up. Now this is a shoulder strengthening exercise until you get to shoulder height and then really it's flexibility and what you have to do here is you really have to draw in that transverse abdominus. So you think about scooping your belly, draw your belly button straight back up and in as you raise those dumbbells above your head because you don't want to arch. This becomes a very good stretch for the upper back. It's good to do this against a door too because then you try and keep your back flat against a door and go up and then you'll get exactly what you need. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, move number three is a slow bicep curl. I changed the order as I was talking, confused myself. So why slow bicep curl? Because a lot of what you do as a new parent is holding stuff out in front of you. Primarily it's that new baby. You want to strengthen the biceps and the wrist flexors and the whole front side of your arms. So you're going to do a bicep curl, but you're going to really, really slow it down. Now, why are you going to slow it down? Why would you want to do it slow? What do you think? Because that's as similar as you can get to the kind of thing you're doing when you're holding your baby. You're holding your baby for long periods of time. And when you do that, you're using more of the endurance capacities of the musculature involved. So when you slow this down, you're going to simulate that as best you can so that you can get stronger and you won't get as tired as fast and hopefully you'll have less back ache and that's where we're going next are the things that take care of the low back but your back starts to ache because anytime you have a load in front of you this increases the force on the back exponentially the farther I take this load away from my upper body and so you've got that baby all day long it's putting a strain on the back you're standing for long periods of time so your hamstrings are getting tight you got a perfect storm for back pain when you're a new parent, all right? So we're gonna go on to those two moves next, which you can do and probably should do right on your kitchen floor just to make sure you get them done. This is a reverse lunge to a lunge stretch. You're gonna stand with your feet right next to each other. I'm gonna watch the monitor there so I can see and make sure that you can see me here. You take a step back. Now this is, can be an advanced move. So if this is all you can do is just take a step back and go a little bit down, that's fine. But the full move is this. And your right knee here, the one that's down right here, this knee's got to stay over that ankle and you should be using your glutes and not rolling onto your toes and putting stress on your knee. So, you know, a few on one side, a few on the other side. And then you go right into the lunge stretch. I'm going to change legs there. I'm just going to take a peek up, make sure I'm in the monitor. This is a terrific stretch. It hits a lot of things at once. For my lead leg, my right leg, the upper part of my hamstring is getting a terrific stretch right now. And if I lift my toes and push the ball of my foot into the ground, I get even more calf stretch. And on my left leg, if I think about internally rotating my hip just ever so slightly, that takes the pressure off the psoas, the hip flexor muscle. And also then as you start to tighten that or straighten that leg, tighten the quads on the top, you'll get a terrific stretch on your quadriceps. And then when you feel like you've had enough, you can put a knee down, step that leg forward, and then step the other leg back, go down. This can be done with the knee down and with the knee up. This is a little bit less advanced. This is more advanced. And then if you're really advanced, you can go this way with it, but that takes a lot of core strength, so be careful. So remember, lifting the toes, knee over the ankle, feeling that left hamstring now stretching up here, slightly internally rotating that right leg. I'm going to turn around here. Slightly internally rotating that right leg. 
just ever so slightly, that takes the pressure off the hip flexors. The thing about those hip flexors, that psoas muscle, those ones right in the front here that get really tight, The weird thing about that muscle is that if you stretch it, it feels really good because it's tight. It's like, oh yeah, that feels really good. Put a really big stretch on your hip flexor. But then the problem is later on, it tightens back up again. And so you end up worse off than you were before. So just think about that as you're doing those stretches with your hips and see if you can tune into that. Last move is a hamstring stretch. This is my all time favorite. Now you can do this with a strap or a band or a belt or anything that you can wrap around your foot. I'm just gonna do it with nothing because when you're in the kitchen as a parent and you're tired and you're just trying to survive, you're not gonna go looking for something. You're just gonna lie down on the kitchen floor. The kitchen floor is nice in the summer, by the way, because it's cool, feels good. You're just gonna reach, keep this opposite leg bent. Reach behind your right knee. Now, most people I see in my studio when they first start to come to work with me are really tight in the backs of their legs and their hamstrings. So they can't perform this move 90 degrees of hip flexion here with your hip on the floor. So you do some version of that. You just reach behind your knee and just straighten it as far as it'll go, pushing your heel toward the ceiling, trying not to create too much tension now in your shoulders and your neck, and then flexing. And this is active. I like a more active stretch. For people who are new to the game and who are really tight, active stretches seem to go a little farther early on than the passive where you just pull and hold and you, with everything you can. And so you're going to do one leg and then the other. And each time you go tightening those quadricep muscles a little more, flexing, dorsiflexing that foot, toes toward your head, that puts even more stretch on the back of your calf. And you're going to find that after you do about five repetitions of this, it starts to loosen up. And I guarantee you, if you're standing at the sink and you stop when your back gets really bad, and you do this stretch in particular, but this combined with the lunge stretch and some of the other ones that I've put into the virtual coaching platform recently, whoops, my head's going all over the place, I apologize. Your back will feel better, I guarantee you. So thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, appreciate your interest, and if you missed the segment tonight, I hope to have the archive on the blog here on this page within the next week or so. Thanks for tuning. More information about virtual coaching is at trainlikeanomad.com, and that should come up on the screen now. Take care, everybody.